Hello folks and friends, and welcome to the factory! Today's repaint subject is Princess Mars from my Sailor Princess collection. If you've seen Venus's video previously, you've seen that face up already. It's in no way a bad one, but let's just say I'm a perfectionist and I think I can improve on her a little bit. So yeah, I kinda did it. I took some acetone and I wiped her clean. For this one custom today I am using a Gulia Monster Idol. This is one of my absolute favorite sculpts. Removing paint can take a bit more time, but we're getting there. There's no staining this time either. The first thing I want to correct on her is the hair. Mars's hair is just as long and full as Venus's, but this time I only have yarn. I decided to give it a shot, so I added a row of extra plugs on the back. The original holes were already free, as when I am rebooting with yarn, I don't do all the rows. To help me with this task, I sectioned the hair first as to not lose the parts or have strands in the way. Then I plugged away. The reroute tool I use is from Retro Dolls US. I do not show it here, but I also added some extra plugs on the front, just to thicken her bangs. Once done and brushed out, this is my result, which is pretty long. If you want to see how I reroute and process yarn in details, I have a video on that and I will link it in the i card and in the description box below. Then I loosely braided her hair to protect it before giving her the burrito treatment. You want something to shield it from the sealant when you do the face. Here's her face, ready for face-up. She is covered with some acrylic paint and primed with Mr. Super Clear sealant. I sketched her features already, like I usually do, and I am ready for the pastels. So, okay, my plan for Ray's face is to give her noticeable Asian features in my style, which was actually pretty hard to do. I looked a lot of references for faces and Japanese style makeup to try to find my footing in there. Gulia, I think, has a very small or cute jawline, I don't know exactly how to describe it, but this is the reason why I picked her. Her eyes, though, are very deep set and I had to fight against that a little bit. As for the shading and contouring goes, I wanted to keep it, well, relatively soft, but still give her dimension, so I held back a bit, mostly on the cheek contour, which is something I usually love to put on my dolls.
I think honestly, the hardest part was to make her look like she had a monolid and that cute little under eye patch Japanese girls love to have that gives them a cute and youthful look. I usually draw more line around the eyes and I went on and tried to retcon and camouflage these as much as possible with highlights. Like usual with my face-ups, I am gradually working my way from more natural and more tame colors all the way to the most vibrant and opaque pigments. Taking my time, for me at least, is really key. It really makes the gradients and the transitions smoother, and it can really define details as I go. Also, another trick. The more sealant you add, the more toot, if I may, you will have. So eventually, yes, you can lose the lighter colors on top of darker ones without any issues, of course, if you have strong enough pigments. But it doesn't take professional quality watercolor pencils for that. And that, my friend, is the magic of MSC. Just make sure to let it dry completely between coats, I'd say about 20 to 30 minutes. Remember to protect your lungs when using aerosol sealant. It's a resin in a can and you do not want plastic inside your body. MSC is known for being toxic, so wear a mask and please spray outside. I'm still having trouble staying in frame and having my camera stay in focus. I am using my phone to film and I suspect maybe my makeshift tripod is not tall enough. Here, she's starting to manifest. For her lips, I went on with pink, making the center a bit darker. I saw that on Japanese makeup images, but it's also something I like doing on my dolls. I think it's, it's very cute in general. One of you guys actually specifically asked me not to whitewash Mars. It's a comment that was left to me on my videos months ago and I took it to heart. It was a choice I made because not only does your opinion matter to me, but Ray's heritage is beautiful and it deserves to be celebrated. Yes, technically all Sailor Moon characters are Japanese, but Ray as a Miko priestess really embodies that vibe in my opinion. She also has black hair and dark eyes which are more natural features. My initial idea for Mars was to make her a witchy god princess, inspired by what we associate with Wicca and related aesthetics. But since she is actually Shintoist and not Wiccan, I thought it was a good call. I made Ray's eyes dark purple to match her original design and I drew a planetary symbol on her forehead with a heart as the base. Takeuchi Naoko herself did, did so in a lot of her artworks and I think that pushes the feminine aspect as this symbol is also used to represent the male gender.
Like usual, I finish my face-ups with details in acrylic paint. The white is what breathes life into the doll in my opinion, and it's one of my favorite things to do. It's also hard and a bit stressful. You don't want to mess up that step. After I am done with the white, I do the same but with black paint. Both are slightly watered down mix and I'm using a very fine nail hard brush for this task. Breathing is optional. <laughs> Here you can see the difference with before and after paint as I did only one side. And that's the finished face, I glossed her lips off camera. So after I removed her hair burrito, I still decided I wanted her hair to be thicker and fuller, so I prepared a yarn weft using the method popularized by Mosekito. Link in the description below. I'm just hot gluing those between the rows of plugs. The result is opulent and she owns everything. The hair might be a tad too long though, but I decided to wait until I put her hair back on her body to see if I wanted to trim it. Okay, I'm talking about opulence. After all of that, since I had my things out, I did the blushing on her body too and I had just received a parcel containing some shiny goodies, so I decided she needed all of that. I glued flakes of big rose gold glitter on her shoulders and added shine with some pearl X powders, which are micro glitter. You need to layer it to show it a bit, but the result is well worth it. My camera though doesn't seem to pick it up well, so it looks it looks way shinier in real life, I I I assure you. Yes, there's some on her cheeks too, because because I could. Okay now the tough part, the outfit. I don't do these often, but here where are my preliminary sketches. I did some research before going into this, and I'm really lucky to have friends who are really knowledgeable. So the main inspiration for this dress was a furisode wedding dress. As far as my understanding goes, furisodes are a type of kimonos that are worn by young women, much like Rei who is a teenager, and some ladies do have them tailored as more westernized wedding dresses for when they are to marry. I did divert a bit away from the traditional kimono-like dress because I wanted her to fit with the other dolls who are more or less our wearing evening gowns. So I started with a very badly cut rectangle of silky red fabric that I protected with some fray check. The plan was to cover it with some floral lace. I did end up not picking this one, but you'll see in a second. BAM! After that was done, I am decides to make them clean and straight, before using some fabric glue to add dark ribbons around it. I did secure the ribbon after with a couple of stitches too. 
Then I used another piece of ribbon to use as the base of the belt or sash, what is called an obi. I was told in my research that the furisode often had colorful and fun patterns, so I whipped out acrylic paint and decided to paint a floral motif inspired by sakura flowers on the obi. As the red fabric was a bit too small and did not cover all her body, I decided to add a layer of black under it. I just sew a long tube skirt that I can tie with a piece of embroidery thread. It gives a nice layered effect. I did a second obi knot at this stage, as the first one, according to my friend, was not formal enough. It's sewn in, but it was inspired by first of the pictures I saw online. My friend also suggested that I look into what she called shigoki obi as a kind of scarf worn around the kimono as well. I picked this purple fabric for it, which I think only add more color and texture, but also reminded us of the purple elements on Mars's Cedar Scout uniform. I also picked another purple thread to make her an obi jime or the cord around the obi. Then I finished the shigoki obi with a touch of lace and some embroidery thread. For the shoes, now the other fun part, <laughs> I wanted to, uh, to do something inspired by Geta or Zohi shoes, so I picked those as a base as they are pretty neutral and the soles would complement well and fit the arch monster high feet. I removed the top part with a sharp artist knife and then I proceeded the delicate and time consuming task of shaping the front into a shape, the shape we associate with tongues and those kind of shoes, which was, uh, well, as I said, a big waste of time. It was not ugly by any means, but the leftover texture did not do it at all. I mean, I cut where shoelaces were molded. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm really not that good at customizing shoes, but I still had the great idea to remove everything and affix a small fake suede strip with some super glue. It also made me able to make the shoes a smidge less tight, and that was needed because she has to wear socks. Here's my finished shoes, painted and decorated. Now I attempted to make look-alike tabby socks. I used some white fabric for it and sewed it directly around the feet before turning them inside out. After testing the fit, I decided to make them a bit more fun and added lace and painted a little flower motif. My friend told me fun socks were worn with the furisode, so it was not an odd artistic choice. I put them on the doll and tried to add the stitch to separate the big toe from the rest, but with how monster high feet are, it's barely noticeable, but I assure you it's there. Now on to the gloves. The first thing I did was to use a sharpie on the joints of the wrists, because I will paint the hands black and paint inevitably chip at the joints. As the ends were drying, I started working on a hair ornament for Ray. It was loosely inspired by a traditional ornament that I think is called Kanzashi. It took me a while, but I decided to make a flower pin. The base is a paper rose, and I added some beads and a small tassel made of embroidery thread to it. I used a tiny bit of pearl X powder to give it some shine. And said powders were sealed with MSC. At some point I contemplated adding green accents, but 
a bit of foam I had, let's be honest. All I see is kitchen sponges, so it's a hard no. To finish the gloves, like I did with the other girls, I'm going to sew a bit of black lace around the wrist area to finish the look. And that, my friends, completes it! I think we do have everything now. All that's left is to assemble her and look at the end result together. Prepare to meet my Princess Mars. Do you think of her? Big shout out to my friend Sojian who helped me a lot. I'll leave a link to her Instagram below, she does amazing watercolor paintings. By the way, I did reach my goals of 1k followers on Instagram recently, and I have all of you to thank for it. Gaining visibility means everything, and it's like my dream can be achieved, you know? Anyhow, I do have a giveaway open right now, and I take entries until the end of April 2021 but you must have an Instagram account to enter. All the details are on my Instagram page and in my latest video where you can see me customize the doll I'll be giving away. As for now, thank you for watching this video. Like and subscribe if you want, it helps a ton. And in the meantime, stay safe.